Moving on to another Idaho four related topic. Um, something I don't even know how to explain this. So, so it's something I hear being talked about mm-hmm. kind of a lot amongst people who closely follow this case. Okay. Um, very closely. There is nothing in mainstream media about it. When you Google it, you can't find anything, <laughs> nothing, at least from my experience. I can't find nothing. Okay. Um, but it's Steve Gonzalez leaked text messages with TikToker Brat Norton. Okay. Now, character analysis posted these on her YouTube channel, and the video goes by really quick, like really fast. I had to slow it all the way down and pause to read through them. And I haven't got through every single one of them. I just highlighted some parts I wanted to talk about because I feel like I really need to read through all of them, think about it. You know, I don't know if these are 100% real, but if they are, then this is what Howard Blum was leaked when he wrote his last article talking about the jailhouse snitch, talking about Dylan and Bethany, you know, texting all night. Like, Many things Howard Blum stated in his article that last time where everyone was like, oh, my gosh, are in these texts. And we know he said he got them from leaked text messages um, between somebody Steve trusted and himself. Now, when you look at this in the beginning, it shows somebody flicking down their they clearly have an iPhone. They're flicking down that little sidebar and hitting screen record. And they pull up Facebook Messenger. And on the Facebook Messenger is a Facebook account called Gonzo Gonzalez. Um, That is his Facebook page from all accounts of what I've seen. Um, you Wait, know, it shows them pull it down and then hit record? Mm-hmm. Because technically it wouldn't be recording yet. Until you hit record. Oh, you're right. Hold on. Let's let's do a it's replay. Okay. We, we no, don't. that's important. You're absolutely correct in saying that. That's important. Okay, so. Okay. Well, no, you don't really hit, see them hitting record. It's just no. their menu. Okay. Um, so it's just hold up and then goes away. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm that's wrong. That's what I would expect to see because yeah. I was like, wait. Yeah, because when I hit record on my let screen, me the, let me see his account. So when you go to uh, Gonzo Gonzalez Facebook page, it's been around for a very long time. You scroll to the bottom; it's been around for many years. Um, <clears throat> which I can put a screen recording. It's also um, connected to Christie's account and family members. It's to very clear, clear it's though, a real that, account. That doesn't necessarily mean that's coming from his account. There could be another there account could be another that saved fake account. His picture and use the same information. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um because I've read some of these because I know that a lot of uh our viewers left comments like, "Hey, have you heard about this? Have you heard about this?" So I'm glad that you're bringing it up for sure. Um but uh interesting. I think there actually might be a part where they click on his profile and pull it up. Why did it show Russian right there? Um, so this is from very early on in the case, um, for, it goes on for a while. Like it's clearly hit and miss communication, um, between, you know, this there. Oh oh my gosh. I did not mean to have audio on. Um, it's very clearly communication over an extended amount of time. Again, if it's real, I don't know. Uh, you know, it seems like somebody would have had to have gone through a lot to text all of this stuff and then screen record it to make it look like it's Steve. Um, but I mean, cause like, there's no way this was a conversation between two random people and then, 
uh, they just switch the name and profile picture on their account. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's clearly from Steve's perspective. Like somebody would have had to have gone through and texted themselves or a friend over and over and over. One person pretending to be Steve, the other pretending to be Brat, if not Brat herself. Um, it would be a lot. Now, you just have to watch it. And also there's a, a Google Drive link that another YouTuber, which I don't know that YouTuber, um, I don't even know their name. I just randomly came across it um, that posted screenshots from all of it. It's a lot. Okay. It's a lot of messages. Uh, yeah. They pull up the full account in this video. Okay. Okay. That that doesn't necessarily mean still. That, no, I believe you. I, yeah. I believe it can still be faked. Yeah. But regardless, let's I feel see like what this some... would be massive if it was real. And it makes me question, because like I said, I've read some of them. Like, like you're saying, it's a lot, you guys, like a lot. So like I quickly sped, jumped randomly through them just to see if there was anything that stood out, you know? Um, and, uh, and it's just, it's so much information. I just, this is like, this is like drugs for mainstream media. So like, why isn't it being picked up? Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering why? that too. Is there some kind of liti litigation That's going on? I'm but even if there's litigation, why wouldn't mainstream media still say, okay, there's all these messages and you know, there's a lawsuit. Why not? Because he's a grieving father? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but thank you to Character Analysis. Uh, we've had some back and forth with her before. I love yeah. her as a creator. She has amazing content. She makes me think a lot. And we see things sometimes from the opposite perspective. Um, and it's a healthy conversation every time. And I, I highly appreciate her. I don't know why she posted this. I don't know where she got it from. I don't know if she believes it's real or not. Um, all her description says is back in October, author Howard Blum wrote an article based on messages Steve Gonzalez exchanged with an internet detective, in quotes. In the messages, SG alleged that he spoke with a grand jury member and received inside info regarding evidence presented by the prosecution. Uh, for a clear view of the messages, see this slideshow from Sleuthing the Truth, and she posts a Google Drive link in her video description, which mm. I didn't realize she posted that in there. I got it from somewhere else, but, you know, shout out to them. That's awesome. The only issue with that Google Drive is that a lot of the messages are not as clear as they are from character analysis video they look like they've been altered by AI or because the quality is so bad in some just random parts of like, you look at one screenshot and you see words like, and it's legible. And then all of a sudden this one block of text looks like a bunch of jumbled up letters. And the only reason I think it's AI is because I have tried to fix, um, like somebody will have like Sam wearing a shirt with text on it and it says something and the picture, the quality of the picture isn't so great or a victim, you know, for a, a thumbnail, they'll be wearing a shirt with text on it and the quality of the picture isn't very good. So there's enhancers you can use that are AI powered and um, they fix the quality and make it look better. Well, sometimes it doesn't fix the quality of the shirt. It jumble. It tries to guess what, it's supposed to look like and you'll just get a bunch of jumbled up weird looking letters that aren't in any language hmm. um that's what it looks like to me is almost yeah. like they've been somehow altered with some kind of ai powered thing like maybe they were trying to fix the quality and it messed up a failed enhancement of some kind yeah i think it would have been much better just to give it to everybody raw if that is what happened Either mm -hmm. that or these are fake. Yeah. I, I have not seen an explanation of how these were obtained. None of Brat Norton's uh, social medias talk about it. 
Um, but so I'm not going to take you through all the messages. It's way too much. I suggest going over to character analysis video, slowing it down to the slowest speed setting and pausing and reading through each one yourself. And you got to be quick with the pause button. Let me tell you, because mm -hmm. even in the slowest speed, it's still going by super fast. Yeah. Um, so basically they're just reaching out. Okay. And saying like, Hey, Steve, someone on my TikTok told me you wanted to see the screenshots of Pinterest for Costas. And this is June 2nd. I'm assuming 2023. This is still pretty early on in the case, but after Koberger has been caught. Um, and then Steve is replying, yeah, some pages that were deleted. And that's how the conversation starts. And then, you know, there's there's some conversation. But one thing I want to mention is that in these messages... Okay, we're assuming it's Brat Norn and Steve. Again, I don't know if it actually is, but Brat says that she's working with Howard Blum. Specifically, says, I'm working with Howard Blum. Would you be interested in talking to me? And, you know, she throughout this whole thing, she's really nice and acting like she's on his side. And like, you know, I want justice for you and your daughter. If you need me to look into anything, I will look into absolutely anything for you. Um, offering him up information, like clearly trying really hard to gain his trust. Um, build a connection. And build a connection, exactly. But I thought, that was, I thought that was super interesting that literally in the messages, she's trying to get Steve to talk to her um, mm -hmm. about more details in the case, offering up information from her research, saying she has sources, saying she has friends, that, you know, can read code and all these things act like trying to be a valued source for him so that he can be a valued source for her. Um, I don't know. I found it interesting. Um, it makes me feel honestly really bad for Kaylee's family. Yeah. Like this whole situation. I think this is extremely wrong to try to get a victim's family to trust you. To use their information for your own benefit. Yeah. Yeah. I. And again, we don't know if these are real. So I don't know. But anybody yeah. who would do that, that's wrong. I would. Yeah. That's why I don't reach out to people like that. I, I'm all for free press and everything. Um, I just think. Honestly, that, not manipulative and shady. Yeah. I just think people should be aware of the person that they're trying to pursue. If, uh, you know, they're going through a personal trauma, um, that I, you need to take that into account and you can't pursue them and, and information and a statement in the same way that you would, uh, somebody that, you know, is not that way, like a whistleblower or something of that nature. It, those are two very, different things in my opinion. Um, and, uh, again, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is true. I have no idea whatsoever. Some of the messages that I've read are like jaw droppers. Um, but some of them that I read have also been very, very like hot topic Topics that the true crime community in general has dug into, you know, one after another after another. So it makes me wonder how real they are, like you're saying. Well, let's you know? let's dig into some of the comments. So in in one message, Brad, OK, again, not knowing if it's real, I'm just going to say who's talking based off of what I see. OK, is Brat says it's um, I want BK to be involved and them not to have the wrong person. You know, trust me, Steve, we're working so hard behind the scenes for the truth to come out. And we just want justice for you and your family. But what's hard is we all feel strongly it wasn't overstocking and others are involved, including BK. Then supposedly Steve says they have him buying the K bar and trying to hide how he purchased it. Um, and she says, yeah, I definitely think BK is involved. Uh, it's all on camera from what I've been told. His car, Murphy freaking out, him taking off at 4.21 a.m. That's another really interesting thing is interesting. everyone kept saying it was so silent. It was so quiet. Why wasn't the dog barking? Well, for one, 
that's not what we heard from the PCA. The PCA literally says the witness, Dylan heard things also that the dog was barking, that there's distorted audio and there's a dog barking on it. Mm hmm. Yeah. So we know that things were heard. We know that the dog was barking. We know there was noise. It was not quiet. Yeah. That I feel like we can throw that whole it was quiet out the window at this point. The PCA yeah. itself totally says the opposite. So I'm not sure why that ever became a thing that it was quiet. <laughs> it wasn't. It was not. Yeah, I think maybe it could be that people were like associating a certain type of like silent hit with mm -hmm. this crime, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like somebody like a ninja went in there and da, 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 did what they got to do and then out of there and nobody heard anything. It's like nothing ever happened. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem like even with the evidence that they do have that that is the case. It's clearly not. Yeah. Um, so Steve asked her if she knows anything about the two protected witnesses. Um, and well, I'm assuming it's two actually, I think, I don't think he says two, but the witnesses, protected witnesses. And there, she says basically there's speculation about Kopaka and, um, I thought that was interesting. And Steve says, I have to keep the witness under wraps. The FBI warned me they don't play games. And again, I'm skipping through these. So I'm not telling you them like, again, it's so many. So I'm going to kind of talk about things that are in the same realm, but I'm going to be skipping through these. I'm not giving you a play by play. Uh, Steve said, I have to keep the witness under wraps. The FBI warned me they don't play games with protected informants, and they could be monitoring everything I say. We've noticed some quite odd communication behaviors. Uh, why did you stop working with Blum? And he says that another author wanted to work with them, Peterson. Okay. And that the Peterson guy is the one who helped connect them with a grand jury member. Hmm. Interesting, right? Yeah. So Steve sends her an image and it is of three people walking into the, it looks like the Linda Lane footage and it's three kids, like, you know, college age kids walking into the apartment, like where the, all those cars are parked and stuff mm. okay. and asks if she's seen it. And also the video of that guy grabbing something out of the dumpster that we've talked about before. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. So I'm telling you, it, we've watched that video on stream, I think, a couple times. And there are so many of our viewers that feel like it's nothing. And I, I think it's something. I just don't know if it's something that's associated with the crime. And I've said it a million times that I think that it could be a dope situation where, you know, somebody dropped it off and that person came to pick it up. Because the thing is, like, I, I grew up in Southern California, all right? We have trash diggers everywhere. Literally, almost every trash gets gone through. And they don't go, they don't stick their head in there for five seconds looking for something specific, grab something, and then walk away. That is not somebody just looking through the trash for recyclables for you know what i mean they were mm -hmm. they were it, they were there looking for something specific yeah. so uh, yeah I, I think so too i agree with you i definitely think he took something out of that trash but did it have um, to do with 1122 i i have no idea none yeah so steve says um that F chief fry um said something about both Jacks being cleared. He said he, they don't get that information anymore and that Jack did a lie detector and gave his DNA and there are cameras showing him entering his house and going to bed. Um, he could get to... he. I, I think he's trying to say, which it seems like he misspells a lot of things, um, that he couldn't get to their house without being on camera or at le least not very easily. Um, and that Brian Koberger is toast over the cast uh, viz cast viz cell traces the grand jury members said what does viz mean v-i-s after cast i mean I or is he misspelling a, again i think probably uh because uh there's a lot of different things that viz could mean but it, i think the obvious one is visibility 
the cast visibility report maybe i'm not i'm not sure i'd have to look that up because it's oh the never- cast via via cell traces the cast via cell traces okay okay well i i hope they have good evidence i do you guys i, I really hope so i know it's not going to be on triangulation though so i hope that that cast report has the metadata the background the application data the geo blended uh gps data like i i really hope that's what it is you know yeah because the triangulation is not there it just isn't um uh, yeah absolutely i hope there's more with it um so she says something about dylan and like you asked about dylan do you know if she left that night and steve said They shouldn't have even been called as witnesses. They didn't help at all. Um, And then Brat says, because Dylan plays what seems to be the only role to the time frame, I guess now besides all this footage. And Steve says, yeah, they created more questions than answers. Um, They talked the whole time it was going down. The crime was going down with text. They were talking the entire time. Murphy was barking and growling for 10 minutes and then stops and the white car takes off at that same time when like right after. Right after Murphy stopped growling and barking, the white car took off. The DNA in the vehicle. We just got done talking about it. I just don't get it. Mm-hmm. So I just hope that someone is able to come out and explain it. Right. And look, if Brian Koberger ends up being proven to be the guy and be guilty, okay, just how? Like, please, I hope that somebody has figured out how it was done. Right. Uh, so also he says the grand jury members told the author, the Peterson author, they wanted to go in the house and hear things firsthand. This book will be released for the trial, and he uh is putting that book. And he's putting that in the book and why he said he wanted to speak with us. And they're trying to fight the house being torn down, basically. That makes sense. If they were told by grand jury members, we wanted to see that house and go inside of it and hear things firsthand because these witnesses aren't making any sense. They're supposed to be allowed to. Yeah. Based off what we read. The grand jury should, they literally are supposed to conduct their own investigation. Unfettered investigation. Yes. That's correct. And if they weren't allowed to, that is such an abuse of the system. That's so messed up. And again, and most of the time they're not allowed to actually. And, and let's, let's look at this where Brian Koberger is guilty, right? Why would the prosecution make mistakes in this way? Like, are you literally setting it up for there to be a retrial? You know what I mean? If if Brian Koberger is the guy, then why are these things not buttoned up, tightened up? There's problems. Like there are issues here, regardless of if his if he's guilty or innocent. It drives me nuts. Yeah. So so get this. You know this picture from across the street? Okay. If this is, these texts are real, that's where this picture you're seeing on the screen, that's across the street from 1122 King Road, that shows the porch, and it shows cars all parked in the front, and we have talked about a white truck passing there, it comes from here. Because in this, Brat Norton claims she's the one who released that. That she put out information Steve was giving her, and people were telling her that They were basically giving her crap online about it. And Steve says about this picture that the camera is way closer and shows them getting dropped off. No one was getting killed at 156. That means this had to have catched the DoorDash. It had to have caught the DoorDash too. Mm Mm-hmm. It had to have caught... But isn't he... Coburger? Steve responding there saying that that's not a real shot, essentially? That, hey, it's actually way closer. What? What's he the- sent that. He said, look at this timestamp. The oh, camera is oh. way closer and shows a girl. He sent that picture. Got it. To got Brat. It. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. 
Yeah, interesting. Um, something was going down on that audio from Linda Lane. It just wasn't at 1122 King Road. Um, so he's essentially... He says in this that audio from that camera and the Linda Lane, they don't match up. They're not the same. So whatever was going down in that Linda Lane thing where people were fighting and things were happening, it wasn't happening at 1122 King Road. Okay. Because this audio doesn't, you can't hear any of that. Got it. Okay. Um, so he also was trying to figure out who those kids were walking in that footage that I was talking about earlier. The three kids walking into the Linda Lane snap, the the shot. Um, the if they had been interviewed, like, uh, AI, this, this one that I showed you earlier. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Um, so basically he, he's like, you know, I don't, I, they're, we'll assume they're witnesses. I don't think they're involved or anything. Um, they look like they're wearing bow ties and getting back from a party. Um, they sent it to the Chapins and to see if they know who it was, um, you know, he doesn't want them threatened. He just wants to know if they saw anything. Um, Fair ask. Yeah. But here, after he was talking about, you know, how the audio doesn't match up and everything, um, he says it is mostly Anne putting out the, and meaning Ann Taylor, putting out the weakest footage, hoping to suggest that this is all the prosecution has. It just doesn't make any sense that everything that leaks is crap the prosecution didn't even use in the grand jury case, which they weren't a part of. Meaning the defense wasn't a part of it. Why is he assuming it's Anne? Who's telling him that? Because you have to understand how many people are interested in this case and are digging and unearthing any little thing they can find. So why are you assuming it's the, pros it's the defense? Yeah. Now, I do believe those tactics have been used in this case, and I think that they may very well have been used on both sides, but I don't know why he's assuming it's Anne here. Yeah, I don't know. It, because because when it when when the, the when the when the when the it didn't help when the, the tires hit the road or whatever the asphalt hits the road, when those jurors are in there watching the real footage that matters. This isn't going to matter anymore. Well, it, and not only that, when you look at what the that footage did for the defense, it hurt Brian Koberger. All that footage has done is hurt Brian Koberger. It has. Koberger. It has not there helped. There's not one thing that has helped. The, the horrible picture of the white Elantra, it hurt him. That got people believing that's literally his car, whether it is or not. And it's just not confirmable because it's so bad is what I'm getting at. So it should be like thrown away because there's nothing def defining in it that can say, yes, definitely. This is this person, you know, with the Linda Lane footage. Again, I don't think there's anything in there that is like, yes, hundred percent. This is this person. You have Gray Hughes going on court TV, proving it's Brian Koberger. Now, Right. The only person out there. I, that's what? why it's not helping the defense in yeah. any way, because then you have mainstream media that's taking that grainy footage, stamping Brian Koberger on it and running with that. All it's done is hurt. It defense. hasn't helped. The only person out there trying to get the information out that they've ID'd the car not as Koberger's is literally like get a clue. That is the only person who has actually tried to identify the vehicles and and try to prove that. it. I mean, he wasn't trying to prove it. He was just trying to ID them. I mean, to see what they were. And he does believe one of those cars is an Elantra. Hmm. So I just don't think any of that proves that it was Brian. I'm not sure why. Just because some times match up, that means it has to be Brian. <laughs> like, it seems a bit silly to me. That that like, oh, because because the PCA says this time and this car is driving at this time. Oh, it's for sure. Brian and he's guilty. Like that makes no sense to me mm. um, because you don't see Brian in it. You can hardly even see a car. Yeah. Yeah. And I just don't see how that could help the defense at all. No. In any way. So, I don't either. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm curious. I I would be curious to know why he believes it's Anne. Taylor also um 
that would not be a good tactic for a, the defense. I agree with you. What would be a good tactic for the defense is using, uh, you know, very clearly defined other focal points, mm-hmm. other cars, other things, you know? So, yeah, I don't think it would help at all. There, it hasn't helped. Uh, if they if they did do it to help, they failed at helping the case. Mm. Um, so, what's interesting is that this is about Hunter coming over, okay? But they didn't have a timestamp, um, and basically, Brat says, you know, that they heard it was Ethan's best friend and a person's girlfriend. Um, that there were two or three people that walked Zana and Ethan back to the house that night. Uh, he said Ethan's best friend and that person's girlfriend. So we think it's Hunter and his girlfriend. Um, and then Steve just replies. It's odd. She didn't mention anything about a dog because the grand jury says that's how it starts. And for some time, it's all you can hear. I talked to Hunter. He said he found Ethan. We also talked with a neighbor the day this happened. She had a wild story that she heard from the survivors saying what happened. The survivors talked to a neighbor? Hmm. Now that I would be interested in hearing. What is And that nothing was story? mentioned about the dog? So, so does that mean in Dylan's statement, she never claimed to have heard the dog barking? She only said she heard like playing, but what, no barking or growling? Because didn't all of it start with her claiming that she heard Kaylee playing with the dog and then after that Kaylee said, I think someone's here? I believe so, yeah. Without pulling it up in front of me. Yeah, I think. I don't know. If I'm wrong, let me know. I can't. I I still can't memorize all of that. (laughs) Like I still can't. No, no, I'm not even going to try. I won't be able to. Um. But, um, so here's another interesting one. The girls' toxicology reports came back clean and clear. Stacy said that Ethan was clear as well. Okay. Odd thing is, is there are mixed stories with two other events. Oh, wait. Hold on. I skipped one. Um, he talks about basically the drug theory and says that he knows Xana had family that was involved in some stuff, but all she, the most she did was basically Molly and that nothing that would lead to something like this, that the girls, you know, only had to drive down the street really to go get pot. Um, leads to stuff like this. (laughs) Well, Molly is a big deal. That's just as serious as like, cocaine is crack yeah i mean it's not like pot no it's not like pot it it isn't it's illegal um and it will get you involved in you know shady characters it can managed by the mob so um Basically says Zana's family has some history, but I was told she did party drugs like Molly, but nothing that was hardcore that could lead to behaviors like this. Buying weed seems fake, to be honest. The kids would just go down the street like eight miles and get it from a store. Christy went with them once to just check it out. Kaylee would be super paranoid and hated it. I've never done drugs ever. Christy barely did before we got together. Nothing much after. The drug stuff seems Hollywood, knowing the toxicology reports were all clear. Um, the, the weed they, they have just over the border seems to be what everyone was getting. Like we've been at senior nights, like five times and the cartoon like rappers are a clear giveaway. Plus explain how a hit would have missed Ethan and Kaylee's new car. No pro is going to rough up someone, not know who all is in the house. They're about to shake down. Honestly, the drug killing seems way far out there. You think if there was a hit and there was a new car there, the people wouldn't go in? No. No, there's nothing that would have stopped it. Agreed. I 
again, I if there's do a legit not, hit on you, they're going in there no matter what. I do not think unless there's straight up cops. It's a mafia related hit like no. that. Like no, what he's either. suggesting. I do not think in, in any way that it could be that. However, with the question you're asking, if by chance it was. It doesn't matter. There could be five Lamborghinis out front. They are going in to do the job. Mm -hmm. Period. I agree. Every time. So. Yeah. If it's a real hit like that, it, you can run, you can hide, but they're going to catch you. They're going to get you. It doesn't it, matter who's around. It's how many people are going to wait in the car and how many people are going to come inside is what's going to determine how many cars are out there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So is, is one person going in or are four people going in? So it, you know, that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, for sure. Um, so he says about Dylan and Bethany's stories that the odd thing is, is their stories are mixed with two different events. Two different events. And I don't, there's no more him clearing that up because the next thing he mentions is Kopaka was 36. My girls would want nothing to do with any old school loser who wanted to hang out with girls 16 years younger. Yeah. Which is weird. Like he just randomly said that. Yeah. I mean, for one, that's not always true, but the majority of the time, yes, I agree. Uh, for two, um, for someone to be older and have the urge to end another person's life, the the victim doesn't necessarily have to have any emotional involvement. So agreed. Um, it can be everything obsessive, uh, in your head, fantasy. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it could be he goes to the same gym as them, like, yeah. or, you know, like just something super random. Um, he says that BK purchased a K bar and Dickie's overall outfit and can't explain where they are after the cops checked all his belongings and could find, couldn't find either one. He sends a picture of what the suit looks like, apparently. Yeah. I mean, look, it, if that ends up being the case, that is good evidence. That really is. Um, it, sh proving that somebody purchased something that is potentially crime related, uh, not that long before a crime and then not being able to come up with it. That's good evidence. It is good evidence. Yeah. Um, then Steve says, remember the report BF saw a naked guy. We heard he took this off at the sl glass slider, placed it in a plastic garbage bag, and she noticed his leaving in his underwear. They have the receipt for it, and he purchased it at Pullman Walmart also on camera. I hope so. I really do. I hope so. He is toast, but someone might have played a part helping, but seems to be risky for him to do that people always talk so here this is a this is um <clears throat> really interesting when it comes to the roommates steve says i'm not i am not what is all being said now again he the way he texts okay it, it's hardly legible in some areas <laughs> but i have heard repeatedly dm is shady and should be looked into and with the with the him not texting very well i've heard from multiple people saying that is normally how he types um he spells maddie's name wrong and that's something that's consistent across everywhere not just these leaked messages which is why that adds more value to these actually being real is that it's consistent with the way he talks and types the grand jury members both said they didn't believe her testimony meaning dylan's um that she's shady Okay, should be looked into. And it created more questions than answers. They said some of them said she would be investigated, but for a reason we don't fully understand, they didn't feel that Bethany was shady um, or was as shady. We only had so much time to ask questions. Hmm. Okay. Weird, right? 
Yeah. One thing most people don't know is if Dylan and especially BF are well connected. Most thing people. Okay. I got that wrong. One thing people don't know is that DM and especially Bethany. Okay. Dylan, and especially Bethany are well connected and have friends in powerful positions. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I read that one. It says, don't know if. One thing most people don't know if DM and especially BF are well connected and have friends in powerful positions. Yeah, yeah. So when I was reading that, I read that as like question. Oh, okay. Not statement. Um, That's been talked about before. And I don't really want to get into that. So... So he says that he doesn't watch very many channels. FBI reps said to be careful um, that you'll get super confused years down the road and not know what your facts are, where you got them from. And all it takes is getting something wrong once and the media will destroy your reputation and you won't be talking to any of it, any of them after that. Yeah. Um, he says he knows IT and we don't allow TikTok on any company devices. 100% the truth. I bet I've never seen your show unless I watched it on a browser. Um, FBI got so involved because BK was being monitored back in Pennsylvania before the crime. He went down because of the informant. He didn't plan on getting caught. Mm, okay. That's so he essentially says... That the only way, and there's more messages kind of about this, that the only way he got caught was because of the FBI. That the Moscow PD would have never caught him. The FBI is the sole reason that he got caught and he was already being monitored in Pennsylvania. Mm. Which almost makes me wonder, is there actually some kind of legitimacy to the Russian hacker theory? Was, if Brian Koberger is guilty, was he doing things on the dark web? And a hacker knew him and the FBI was tracking him. Mm. Wouldn't that be crazy? It would be. It would be. But if you're doing the dark web right and he is trained in that stuff, uh, it, it, you can't just be tracked. True. It doesn't work like that. That You cannot be tracked. The FBI do regularly try to monitor the dark web, though. They they do monitor the dark web, but when they catch people up and, and close things down like Rainbow Road, um, which is a place for anybody that doesn't know what it is, it was an online marketplace for all things illegal, for drugs, guns, hits, um, IDs. Anything illegal. Literally anything illegal. And the way that they shut that down is they started making buys and then they would watch the drop zone catch that person then they started connecting bank accounts like it was footwork it was not it work hmm. it was footwork that were you know using tools on the back end track where this money went uh go to the drop zone and pick up the person that dropped it off in that drop zone uh you know what i mean so one thing about the pool party, because this has been brought up a lot too, is that Steve says Kaylee and Jack were at an indoor pool party. Um, and I'm guessing it was like the same day or around the same day as Brian Koberger at that pool party we've all heard about. And that Christy has pictures of it and it was at a hotel. And um, Brat says, hmm, not the pool party then because Brian Koberger was at the Grove, an outdoor apartment complex party. And she asked him to attach a picture. He never does from what I saw. Um, he said he has a single photo. All the kids were together inside. Kaylee and Maddie might have been Jack as well. Um, I can get it. I was just mad because Christy, uh, at, mad at Christy because I asked about the pool party. She said she didn't know. Then she shows me a picture. <laughs> um, he also liked their stuff via Instagram and LinkedIn. They took Kaylee's down. Which is, remember, with Chronicles of Olivia, Chronicles of Olivia talked to Olivia, Kaylee's sister, and the the account was literally taken down the next day. And Olivia called the police department and was like, why did you take down her LinkedIn? And they're like, what? We didn't. Mm. 
So what does that mean? And why didn't Steve say that? Why do you say they took down Kaylee's LinkedIn? Maybe LinkedIn did it. I don't know. Hmm. Sounds like he contacted Maddie on Instagram, but she never opened the messages. And there were so many fake accounts, but the only way they would know that is if, like, if they actually saw the messages and they had a previous date. So I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. And for anyone watching, this still goes back to, look, if you're watching us, if Brian gets proved without a doubt to be guilty and the FBI was watching him in Pennsylvania because let's say he's been doing horribly shady stuff for a long time and was that good at hiding his tracks. Maybe he was doing red room type stuff or something like that on, on the dark web. Um, it doesn't change anything that we've looked into in my opinion, mm -hmm. you know, people often comment on our videos saying that, um, like leaving comments, well, you know, what if he's guilty? Like, what are you going to say then? I'm not, nothing changes. No. Nothing changes. That's the whole point in looking into the investigation is whether he ends up being guilty or innocent, this investigation and the details that we've been given thus far, it is what it is, you know? It mm -hmm. is what it is. Yeah. We are we want Brian Koberger to be guilty. I don't know how many times we have to say that. I don't I don't know why we get put in a box of, like, innocenters. We're, we're not either. We're not pro him being guilty or pro him being innocent. We just want justice for everybody. And like I said earlier, the best case scenario is him being guilty for everyone. Now, if he's innocent, that's a major issue. And I, I think that it's it's crazy to me how people act like speculating about his innocence or how it could be somebody else is damaging to the case. Yet you think speculating about his guilt and trying to prove he's guilty is OK. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same problem. Same problem. It is the same problem. It's the same coin, different sides. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there is one interesting part I want to mention. It, this is going on for a really long time. Um, so I want to kind of wrap it up. He does talk a lot about uh, audio and stuff being edited and fake and blaming it on the defense team. Um, and he also talks about that he... They're public defenders. I, I could see a defense team doing that that is like a high value defense team, high paid attorneys, but like these are public defenders. I, know. I have a very hard time thinking that they would go out of their way to do something like that. That's like trolls online. Like, do they exist? Sure. Is there people who take the time to fake stuff? Sure. But it's very few and far between the majority of the population and people out there they don't have time to put no. effort into that stuff. They don't even have time to do their own research into cases like these, which is why they come onto shows like ours to get a rundown from people who do have some time that can do it, you know? Exactly. Absolutely. Um, but two things I want to mention real quick is he says, we do have a long story about another story that came from a jailhouse so-called snitch, but it never developed into anything we could find proof of. We spent weeks trying and interviewing some shady leads, um, which I guess that's where the jailhouse snitch comes from, uh, which is interesting. And he also mentions, which I'm trying to find here, um, Oh, oh, okay. There's one more thing actually too. Uh, she is for sure protected by her stepmother's law firm. And she's talking about Dylan or he is talking about Dylan. Sounds like there's some power in that firm. They're also being helped by Jack Showalter's family. They tr threatened to sue me pretty early into the case, sent somebody to my house. They trespassed, came down my driveway, right up on my porch. It was pretty wild. They have a full phone dump of both girls' phones. Gosh, I, I just and we don't have to go into that that stuff because we don't know if this is true. All of it, it is hard. So, I mean, that's that's real. That's accusatory. So 
that's why I have an issue with it. I have an issue with any parts that are accusatory, like saying, oh, you know, Dylan Mortensen and Bethany Funk are protected by big, giant, powerful families. Like that's accusatory. And that is making a guilty assumption of them in this case. And I feel weird talking about that because one, I don't even know if this is real. Yeah, I agree with you. So I I don't want to go down that road until it's verified, a hundred percent verified, because it's accusatory. Well, and it's gonna it's you... gonna feed the frenzy of people out there that are doing really mean things and saying really horrible things. Stuff like that justifies their behaviors and being jerks. And we got to be careful about that. We do need to be careful. But I also want to mention having a lawyer does not mean you're being protected by powerful people. Steve's family lawyered up right away. If you're smart, you get a lawyer. That does not mean you have powerful people behind you. A lawyer is a lawyer. And that law firm that he's talking about isn't even in Idaho. Mm -hmm. So how does that give her a step up above anyone else? I just don't see that. I don't. You're right. We do have to be careful with that. But it's also not fair to say somebody's being protected by powerful people just because they have a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just don't want to comment on it. Anyway, um, he does say that Kaylee had only lived there for six months and her room still had boxes in it. And the one I keep trying to find, which I probably am just going to have to not find it, but mention it, is that he says he has white hat hackers working for him and they have access to all of brian koberger's bank records or yeah. maybe not all of them but a couple of them yeah i, uh, I can't part. remember what However, it all said i i just want to be very clear that is not a white hat hacker that is a black hack hacker so that is illegal um and again i it makes me nervous putting stuff like that out there because one it, steve gonsalves is going to take any heat on this that's the last thing i want him to but that's black hat hacking that is not white hat hacking you are not just allowed to go break into somebody no, somebody's not. personal financials oh yeah they have the cell tower dumps and access to some of his old bank accounts um Mm-mm. yeah but that's basically it um i have no idea what to think about any of it honestly cuz again this could all be fake um I use the names that were used in the messages. I do not know if they are Steve. I do not know if they are Brett Norton. Uh, All I can say is that I feel pretty bad for Steve right now, regardless if they're real or not, (laughs) because people are going to believe they're real. Um, And even if they were real, it's not really fair to him to leak his messages like that. Like, I just, I don't know. I can't imagine being in his situation. I feel really bad for him. Is the information interesting? Is it like, a like, is it not a treasure trove? (laughs) Yeah, it's a treasure trove if it's real for people who want to understand this case a little bit better. Um, But in the same respect, I don't want to get information that way. Yeah. Now it's out there. There's nothing we can do about it now. And Mm -hmm. we have made the, we've made the, what is it called? The like promise to talk about anything and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm talking about it because it's already out there and there's nothing we can do about that now. It's on the internet forever. Um, But yeah, I just don't know how, it doesn't feel very ethical, does it? So uh, I want to know what you guys think about the information contained in these messages. Um, Do you think they're real? Do you think they're not? Um, They're here to stay now. Um, And if you have any thoughts on them at all. But that's essentially it. All right.